or conservative. Why did why should we do a 3D modeling? This is the question that is always asked why should I make a 3D model? First of all, to check the stability of the structure and the deflection and the drift values and to get the column loads and the shear walls when the wind is applied also if you are applying the seismic or you're applying a plast or applying any other load it will be different if you analyze it as a 3D or 2D after that we will get the reactions and we will get it to the foundation system the ETAPS modeling the ETAPS modeling was a very important part in our presentation in our project because we have used the manual meshing to mesh the slabs and connect it with the columns and the shear walls this was a very important step to assure that the finite element software is working properly the ETAPS modeling also in the beers and spandrel system that is used we can put the spandrel to transfer the load horizontally to the beers and putting the beers as a vertical members to take the loads to the down floors the load combination that we have this that we have taken is assumed by the ACI 2005 in the manual wind load calculation we have taken the exposure D because the structure was open to the water surface and we have taken the category of the building is a 3 because the importance factor is 1.15 because it will be full of people and the basic wind speed as have been discussed with the major consultants in Qatar which is 150 km per hour 41.7 meter per second and because it's around 23 it was very uh, empirical to calculate that it's a flexible building in the dynamic analysis and the natural period estimated was 1.36 seconds computed gust factor was equal to 0.873 the ETAPS is generating the wind load automatically so we have used the command of the ETAP to check our calculations manually and we have inserted the CP the windward coefficient and the leeward coefficients and we have considered that we have only one case which is the most probably case the a critical case and we have taken from the ground to the roof and including a parapet of 100 1000 uh, millimeter with the wind speed that we choose it by mile per hour and the exposure and the gas factor and the directionally factor KD typographically factor KSD is equal to 1 this is a comparison between the manual and the computer wind analysis calculations uh, you can see this axis is the wind force which is per floor kilonewton and the elevation as you can see that the values are very uh, uh, near and this is why we have been assured that our values and results is true and using some uh, lateral deflection analysis in the ETAPS we can check the deflection this is a video but it's not working because a technical problem it cannot be shown in this video but if you want it will be available on YouTube to see the deflection of the building with the uh, lateral load also after that we can check the lateral deflection check the drift with the maximum deflection bear the total height the maximum deflection we get it around uh, 56 millimeter over the 84 meter we can get that the ratio is less than the 1 over 500 specified in the code and we have checked the interstory drift which is the maximum deformation at the top of the story minus the deformation of the bottom of the story divided by the height of the story you can get this value which is 0 0.00082 and it is less than the interstory limit which is the height over the 500 this is the dynamic uh, uh, values the dynamic output from ETAB he gave me some uh, uh, period time which is 1.98 which is actually more than the was calculated using the empirical um, calculation and this is because the ETABS is considering all the geometry of the building in his analysis in its analysis so the period is usually bigger in the finite element softwares than the empirical values now we reach the design of the most important as you can see in this part we have understand the architecture analyze the design and the floor systems perform the 3d analysis and go to the 3d model stability 
After that, we can go to the vertical members and starting by the major part of this building, which is the shear walls. We have divided to different piers, but it was designed as one core. And we have did this by considering all the load, all the principal forces. We consider the axial load that is coming for each mirror, the moment on the strong axis, the moment in the weak axis, the shear in the strong axis, and the shear of the weak axis. And we have considered the uh, torsion. To design all of these values in one time for each floor, for each pier, for each lot combination, it will take a million of time to present it. So this is why we have put in all the equations that we used in the design to check the axial load capacity and to determine the horizontal reinforcement and using this horizontal reinforcement we can determine the vertical reinforcement using for the maximum moment and the uh, strong axis and the torsion and after that we can check the axial load with the weak axis point if it is covered or not to do this we have developed a macro function it was a very unique func function excel function which were uh, easy to import the data from the ETAPS for all the principal forces and copying it to some equations that design the shear wall for each floor for each lot combination so because it's not it's not always critical to take the maximum axial and maximum torsion maximum shear maximum moment because sometimes the axial load is helping the design of the shear so we have to design it case by case load combination by load combination story by story this is why we have developed this uh, macro function and it was very efficient to give a huge data in a very fast time we have analyzed the shear walls using ETAP, export them as a text file, all the load combination, then copy all wall forces in an Excel file, which is a prepared to uh, take this uh, Excel text file from the ETAP. This forces is copied in the macro function for each floor for one load combination, and then we run the macro and get the design results. We apply this for all load combinations and then take the largest amount of repart depending on the load combination group the floors and according to the reapers and go for the detailing this is the result for each beer as you can see for each floor and this number for example 120 this is coming from different from the six or eight load combination that we have used in this floor as you can see this floor which is the 11 has a reinforcement more than the rib which is the first one or second one this is because it's dependent on the torsion shear and tor not only the axial and the moment after that we group these values and we take uh, them for the detailing as you can see in this drawing this is the elevation of the detailing to show the uh, opening with the slab now we reach the column design we have designed the column as pinned column and this assumption is a very uh, conservative because you are taking all the loads to the shear walls and we have a lot of discussion about this and we will separate a presentation clarifying the problem of the uh, rigid connection of the beam or the floor column connection and the symbol connection and why we can do a pin column connection in concrete structure or not this is, will be dis displayed in a separate presentation we have designed it as a pin in, in, this in this graduation project we take the axial and we check the reinforcement this is the max this is the column types and this is a sample detailing of some of the columns ramp design was designed a very simple way which is using a one-way slab system we have distributed the load of the ramp to the beams that is supported on the on the columns as was shown previously this is the details of the beam which is the continuous beam that holding this ramp and we have also designed one of the beer walls this beer walls was surrounding the building it was designed for a moment on the weak axis per meter and this is the general details of this bearing wall. The stairs was a very nice structure, which is uh, was we consider it as fixed with the shear walls, in order to minimize the moments. And we get the negative uh, values and the positive value using stats uh, stats software. And then we designed this stair as a continuous beam supported on the shear walls. As you can see, this is the negative reinforcement that is detailed 
in a very correct way because we have to make sure that all these junction is available and able to resist this tension